So trigger warning for this video, it is very emotional and I do discuss some things that might be a trigger for some people such as mental health and abuse. So this is not a happy video, this is not an uplifting video and you probably shouldn't watch it at all. I'm sorry I've been gone for a while with no explanation but this past week has been absolute hell on earth for me. Andrew has left me and I don't think he's gonna come back. There are a lot of things that I don't show you guys or tell you guys because I wanted my channel to be positive and uplifting, but I am mentally ill and I have a personality disorder that completely destroys everything I touch. And now it's destroyed my marriage and I have ran off the only man who has ever loved me or stood by me for any period of time. I don't want you to think that Andrew is a bad person or a bad husband or a bad man because he's not. He is a beautiful, compassionate, kind, empathetic human being. I have not been um, a great wife to him. I have a lot of problems that stem from a trauma that I cannot heal and he cannot help me to heal it either and he's had enough of trying and I do not blame him one bit, okay? He's a good man and I um, destroyed him. So if I say that I love you, then you better run for the fucking hills because I'm about to break you down into nothing. Andrew has asked me to get therapy multiple times throughout the year, but years, but I thought that I was doing okay, that I had things under control. I see now that's not true, that I am completely fucking off the rails. I cannot stay here in this prison of memories. I have to sit in here in this house filled with pictures of us, our wedding pictures, and our dead baby's ashes. So I resent that. I'm angry that he gets to go be free. I don't even know where he is. He could be staying with another woman for all I know. I gave him time. I gave him a week. I begged him to come talk to me, which was probably the wrong decision. I made a fool of myself in front of everyone. I had the cops called on me. I threw myself on the front of his car to prevent him from leaving after manipulating him to come back here by telling him I was gonna kill myself. Yes, that is the kind of fucked up things that I do. I can't regulate my emotions and I act on impulse and I just run everyone away. We really were happy together a lot of the time of insecurity and just a lot of issues that stem from my childhood. I was severely abused as a child, but because of that, I have like this hole in my heart that cannot be filled. And I try to fill it. I try to fill it with food. I was a food addict. I try to fill it with love. But it can't be filled with love because no matter how much somebody gives me, it is never enough. When I love someone, I cling to them desperately and I suck them dry. No matter how much they give me, it is never enough and I take more and more and more and I don't give anything back because I have nothing to give. I have put him into the role of a pseudo parent because I keep trying to get the love that I didn't get as a child from my parents and I keep trying to get it from him. I am angry at this situation, but I'm mostly angry at myself and not at him. Like, how can I expect him to deal with that shit? He's dealt with it for 15 years and honestly, I feel lucky that he stayed by me for that long. He's been the pillar of my life and that is a problem because he shouldn't have to be the pillar of my life, you know? I have just been like taking sleeping pills and drinking vodka every day because it's the only way I can make it. If by some miracle he comes back in the next three days and wants to work things out, I am 100% willing to do that. Andrew and I have been texting all day today. I asked him, can we meet somewhere? I told him like, I'm getting a car, so can we meet somewhere if you don't wanna come over here? And he said, I'm willing to meet somewhere and talk if you want. We didn't make any concrete plans, but he did say that. And he said, um, I can't trust you yet which sounds pretty good to me because yet means that he might be willing to trust me in the future. So of course, I'm not gonna tell you everything that we talked about because it's very personal, private stuff, but I just wanna tell you like a couple things that gave me a little bit of hope. And I told him that I want to work on things that I do want to try to save our marriage. And he has not said that he doesn't, so. They didn't come and bring the car yesterday like they were supposed to and that just sent me out of control because I, I could not deal with the anxiety and the distress of that because I was expecting to have a car and I didn't want to have to spend another night in this house without being able to go anywhere. I just felt so stuck and so trapped and it, it just really sent me off the deep end, y'all. And I just went crazy and I texted Andrew and I called him at work. Like I called his work, okay? Which is crazy and I should not have done that. And I'm surprised he even talked to me at all after that. Um, I'm really surprised because I thought he was gonna be like really angry with me because obviously I caught him off guard. He answered the phone when I called his work. If he didn't answer, I was just gonna hang up. And I know this is crazy obsessive behavior, okay? This is part of my mental illness that I'm trying to deal with. I'm just telling you my experience 
experience of what I did when I was in a really dark downward spiral last night. At first I texted him a couple times, I didn't get an answer, and then I called, I called his phone, I didn't get an answer, and then I called his work. And I thought if he doesn't answer, I'm just gonna hang up. Um, so, but he did answer and I did a restricted, like I did a star 67, so he wouldn't know it was my number. And he answered, hey, this is Andrew, how can I help you? And I was like, hey, it's me. And he was like, I'm at work. And I'm like, I know, but I really need to talk to you. And he was just kind of trying to like play it off because he's at work and his coworkers are around. And I was like, can you please call me later? I really need to talk to you. And he's like, yeah, okay, fine. And then he hung up and then he never called me later. So I figured that I blew it big time. Like he was probably really mad at me for doing that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but it like really soothed me to be able to talk to him. And he told me some more things, you know, that I needed to hear about how he was feeling and how he was doing. And hopefully we can make some progress out of this. I don't know. Y'all, we're about to do something crazy. So Andrew just told me, we just went out to lunch together and he said, let's get in the car right now and go to Arkansas. And I said, okay, let's go. So we're going. No warning, no planning. We are just, I'm packing up my stuff right now. Got my suitcases out, about to start packing up. He's at his friend's house getting his stuff. And uh, we're just about to leave right now. It's like two in the afternoon and we're leaving. We're taking the dogs with us. Andrew's mom is gonna take care of Gibbons and we're getting the fuck out of here. You can kind of see who's next to me. <laughs> and we um, are going to Arkansas right now. I guess now is as good a time of any, as any to tell you that we are moving back to Arkansas right now. <laughs> right at this very moment. Um, we actually decided to come here and look for an apartment. And um, if you didn't realize it, Andrew and I are back together. We have mutually decided to decided that we want to be together and we're both willing to do the work that we need to do to fix our marriage and our relationship and we're both going to be going to therapy separately and then we're also going to be going to marriage counseling together. Um, neither of us wants to be apart and we just have issues that we have to work on and we're both going to do that and I'm very happy. I'm skipping forward and I'm sorry you didn't get to see all the other vlogs but there's no way in hell I can edit them now. Andrew and I are over for good. He is gone. And I will not be taking him back. My heart is broken into a million pieces. The only thing that gives me comfort is that I'm home. And my best friend is on his way over here right now. So I have someone and I don't feel as alone as I did in Colorado. So... This morning, I thought everything was going fine. Andrew, um, we were hanging out. We went out to breakfast. We had a great morning together, at least I thought. And he left to go to the music store. And after about an hour, I got a text that said, I don't even want to tell you this. I don't even want to say this. It said that he has cheated on me several times. Um during our marriage and I never knew <laughs> and that he could not live with that guilt and he doesn't think that I should forgive him and I agree I I don't <laughs> now I will not be taking him back <laughs> even if he wanted to but he doesn't <laughs> I love and value myself more than that now the first time when he left me I didn't I wouldn't have cared if he told me he fucked 50 women. I still would have taken him back, but I have grown and I have become strong. He's turned off his phone so I can't reach him. He does not want to talk to me. He just wanted to drop that news and leave. He left all of his stuff here, everything he owns, I guess quit his job. And he's left me here now with this apartment. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about our financial situation as far as like separating out our accounts and dividing the money and that. So I, I have to, I guess I'm going to have to talk to his mother about that, which feels bad. But um, I'm also going to be filing for divorce as soon as I can figure out how to do that and get over this a little bit. And all this time I thought that it was my fault. And he let me take the blame. Hell no. And you know, some of it was, some of it was my fault, but what he did was not my fault. This is the second time he's left since we've been here. <laughs> I vlogged the first time, but I lied to you about it. Um, and I'm not going to publish that vlog because I can't go back and, and edit any of those vlogs that have him in it. I'm sorry. We're just immediately caught up to the, to the present now. You saw the apartment tour. There was a week in between there where we moved. I'm to Colorado. I vlogged all that, but I can't. I'm sorry. I can't go back. 
And he said that he turned his phone off and for me not to try to follow him. And when he, he said when he gets to Colorado, he's going to he's going to throw his phone away and I can contact his mom if I need anything legally. So he's not wanting to face this or face me at all. And that's fine. And as much as I love him and I am in love with him, I am in love with him. I have to let him go. I have to let him go, y'all. And it's, it's so hard because I feel like he's a part of my soul. I feel like if he would have stayed here and we would have started marriage counseling and this would have come out, maybe we could have worked through it. But at this point, the way he just ran away and dumped that on me. Mm -mm. I sent Andrew a big, long email telling him how much I loved him and how much he meant to me and how I was letting this all go and how much he fucking hurt me and betrayed me. Although I doubt he'll read it or even care. Or I am like almost drunk. I have to be honest with you guys right now. I mean, I don't have to be honest with you, but I'm going to be. I have developed what I believe to be the early stages of a drinking problem. I just don't know what else to do. On one hand, I feel like I am ready to let this go. The way that he just dropped a bomb and ran away, just leaving me blown to pieces is fucked, okay? And I have tried to protect him. I have tried to help him. I have tried to love him. I have tried to love it out of him and it doesn't work. Oh, so yesterday, I could not film anymore because I got an email from Andrew and I know, I know, I should not be in contact with him but um, it really kind of broke me down for the rest of the day. So, okay, I'm gonna get to that. Let me tell you the story of how this all happened, okay? So, I posted on Instagram that I was going out with a friend, and I did, and I was looking so freaking cute too. Y'all check that out. Um, so, this is a guy that wants to date me, and I went out to dinner with him. We had a really nice time. He's a really nice guy, but I realized I am not ready for dating. I just, it was, <laughs> oh God. I'm not ready for dating, okay? I thought I was because, well, I didn't think I was. I wanted to be because I'm lonely and I'm sad and I don't like being alone. It's really hard for somebody with BPD to be alone um, because I, it, I don't know, that's just part of the freaking illness, okay? It's really hard to be alone. I sent him an email and I should not have done that. I know that's bad, but it's just, I had all these things that I wanted to say and I honestly didn't think he would read it or reply, but I sent him an email telling him everything that I felt, I know it was a mistake, and now I'm dealing with the repercussions of that action. Like 11 o'clock the next day in the morning, he sent me an email back, and he said the most beautiful things to me, how he felt about me and our relationship and everything that he had done, and it really made me struggle. I thought if he would have said those things to my face, I wouldn't have been able to resist it. I would have probably just taken him back. Some things that he told me include that he regrets everything. The stress and anxiety of hiding all these things from me had been killing him for years and he should have told me so long ago. And um, he really wanted to start over in Arkansas. He thought that he could just bury everything that he'd done, come back here where we fell in love and start over. But it turns out he couldn't because, you know, he, you can't run from that. You can't, you can't escape that. Um, that he hates himself for everything he did. He regrets every decision that he made. He's sorry, he loves me. He doesn't expect me to forgive him. He really just wanted to come back here and have a life with me, but he couldn't live with himself still lying to me. And the guilt and anxiety he's been going through because of keeping secrets and hiding things has devastated his soul. And that's a big part of why this all happened. He's still making impulsive decisions, running away. Um, he's so proud of me and it fills him with shame. He thinks, he feels that I'm doing everything and he just ruined us. He's sorry, he loves me, he misses me. And that he's so sorry that he made made it out like I was the bad one when really it was him all, all along. I sent him one more email back, y'all, and I know I shouldn't do it, but it's just, I have such a hard time resisting him. He has such power over me. Like, I just, I love him so much. I'm gonna try not to contact, not to talk to him again, even if he contacts me, because there's just nothing to be done. There's nothing to be gained there. There's no closure from this. A couple things I found out today from outside sources. Andrew is not with another woman right now. He has been staying with his mom this whole time, which he told me, but I didn't believe, but now I do believe. So I thought he had been in a relationship with this woman for a year, including while I was pregnant. That also turns out to not be the case. Now there probably is more that I don't know, but what I do know right now is that he slept with five women over 10 years. They were all casual. They were all from Tinder and they were all one time, except for one of them was twice. Um, I do believe that's the truth. 
there's all there was also a lot of like online stuff which we've had problems with that in the past so that doesn't surprise me too much i still don't know if he actually cheated on me while i was pregnant he swears that he did not i don't know if i believe that and also he would have to have cheated on me like while we were trying to have a baby so that's just as bad in my opinion i feel that he has an addiction i feel that he has a problem like a porn slash sex addiction um, that he needs to get treatment for. I'm learning more and more of the actual truth. I know that he didn't, he wasn't in some kind of relationship with somebody that is, that didn't happen. Um, they were all just casual sexual encounters, which honestly does not make it any better. I mean, it kind of does make it better. It, do, it doesn't make it better, but I would rather it had been a one night stand than him being in a like emotional relationship with somebody. So, I mean, I guess if you have to pick your poison, right? So I don't know how I'm feeling. It's only been a couple of days since I found this out and it, it's still really hard for me to cope with and deal with. I'm just gonna try to get through a little bit at a time, you know, a day at a time, an hour at a time. Sometimes I just try to get through a minute at a time. And that's what my therapist told me to do. Like, just get through the next thing that you have to do. Just one thing. So I try not to think too far ahead right now. I just think, what do I need to do right now? Even if it's just, I need to take my shoes off or I need to feed the dogs. And that's all I think. I don't think any further than that because sometimes it's too hard. And sometimes you just have to do whatever you can do right now. It is our wedding picture, our honeymoon pictures from when we went to Disney World. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it. So I'm going to give this to him and make him take it. I'm going to put that in his box. It's that was his mom's frame anyway. I don't want to see that. These we got from Medieval Times. We got these glasses when we went to Medieval Times. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, y'all. This is all so hard, and this is why I've been putting this off. Because I don't want to go through these memories. I don't want to relive them. And it's not fair that he left me here to do this alone. I mean, what do I do with these? What do I do with these? Do I keep one and give him one? Do I throw them away? Do I give them both to him? Do I keep them? I don't even know what to do. Since he made me deal with it, I'm putting it in his box. I don't even know. I just gotta get it out of here. I just gotta get it away from me. I ended up talking to Andrew on the phone for three hours. And I'm really glad I did it because he pretty much confessed everything to me. Um, I asked him questions and he answered all of them. Um, I think I pretty much know the whole picture of everything that happened now, and I'm ready to let go. I am very tempted to go to the liquor store and buy a bottle of whiskey and drink it all. Y'all, I just got a weird-ass message that said, Cindy, Andrew got you a gift from Instacart. You've got a gift from Andrew, and it has a little note that says, Making up for the past. <laughs> Why would he do that? Why would he do that right now? Yep. He sent me a bouquet of flowers. I just don't know how I'm supposed to feel about this. Now when it's way too fucking late to make any difference, you weren't thinking about that when you were fucking other women, but now you think about it, like what does he want from me? What does he want? How does he want me to react to this? It doesn't matter how much I love him, does it? It's not gonna change any of that. It's not gonna bring back the trust, the sorely misplaced trust. Um, I'm in Colorado. I drove 14 hours all night long on no sleep to come to Colorado to see Andrew. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, I know what you're gonna say, but I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to see him. So I came here and I saw him and it was hard and I'm probably gonna see him again. Also, I just ordered DoorDash in my hotel room and I still have not slept at all and it is 4, 10 p.m. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you the truth here. I'm sorry about the crappy lighting and the fuzzy looking video because I'm in a hotel room and the lighting just sucks, and, I'm, and I only have my phone with me right now. I'm gonna see Andrew again, okay? I have a sickness. I have, there's something wrong with me. I have a weakness for this man. Maybe we'll just sleep together and I'll go home. I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you what happens, okay? I'm gonna be completely honest about this fucking journey. I wish I would have vlogged my trip up here last night, but I don't think I was really in my right, like, state of mind. I'm trying to get better lighting. Here, let's go this way. I am now realizing that I might have driven 14 hours for a booty call with my ex. Not smart, Cindy, not good for you. Wondering how this all came about and how Andrew and I got back into contact, it's because he emailed me on my birthday, happy birthday and some other stuff. I broke down and emailed him back the next day. And then the next day he emailed me back a whole bunch of stuff. And then he called me on his new phone number. So now I have that. And I'm just gonna be fully transparent and honest here. Um, he's probably gonna come back and stay the night tonight. It might be a bad decision, but I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a bad place and I want his comfort, so I'm gonna take it. The night has taken a strange turn and I am stranded at the Circle K with a flat tire at three o'clock in the morning. 
But guess who came to help me? Can you flashlight mode that thing? Yeah. We just got back from dinner and then we just found like this secluded field that you can see behind me so we can uh, smoke some weed <laughs> behind the hotel. Um, it's really nice up here though. It's nice and cool. The sun's kind of going down. And don't worry y'all, this is legal here, so you don't have to worry about me. Um, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here because it's getting dark outside and we're really tired, so we're just gonna try to get some sleep and leave tomorrow morning and head back to Arkansas. Um, yes, Andrew's coming back to Arkansas with me. I guess I just gave that away. So um, I will talk to you guys more about that in the next vlog. This stream is probably a terrible idea and I probably should not be streaming in the state that I'm in right now. I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> And you were all right. Hey, my life is over part three. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You knew it. I don't feel like my life is over this time, you know. <sighs> okay, I kind of do. That's a lie. I kind of do. Um, but and I kicked Andrew out yesterday. I packed up all of his shit. I threw it out. And I told him to get the fuck out. <laughs> and he did. Players only love you when they're playing, and he was playing. <laughs> oh, he was playing. I found out about everything that he's done, and it's... Oh, God. It's so much worse than I ever imagined. Um, I am just sharing my all my shit online so that I can earn an income during a time that is very, very, very difficult for me. So, I love Andrew very much, and it's very, very hard for me to let go of this relationship um he's been lying to me about everything every i think that he's a pathological liar and i don't know how i didn't realize that for 15 years but he's got somebody else who is younger than me she's in her 20s <laughs> she's fucking 20s i'm so sick because i still want him I built my whole life around this man and we had a whole future planned together and now I just feel so lost. How can I say this? Um, my I base my identity on my partner, which I know is, is sick and not good, but I feel like now that he's gone, I'm, I'm no one. The whole last four months, I have only... Um, wanted to have him back i've known for a while about her i just like didn't want it to be true you know it's really hard to let that go because we had so many good times over 15 years you know i'm just a fucking i'm a wreck right now i probably shouldn't even be doing the stream there's something i haven't told you and I really don't feel like I can do any kind of healing moving forward type of journey on this channel if I don't tell you the entire truth. And uh, I had my therapy today and all I did was talk about this particular thing and I'm very emotionally drained right now. But there's a reason why I know that Andrew will never try to come back. And it's partially his decision based on his actions. And it's also partially that he's done something that is so fucking horrible that I could, even me, even me, I could never take him back. I could have forgiven anything. I could have forgiven him having a mistress. I could have forgiven all the lies, all the bullshit, all the cheating, all of it. I could have forgiven any of that, and I would have. But this is fucking unforgivable. Like, some part of me kept thinking, maybe we can sweep this under the rug somehow. Maybe we can find a way, you know. Maybe we can find a way to still be together, but we can't. <sighs> She's pregnant. And she's not just pregnant. She's due in three weeks. <laughs> He's known since November. The whole time <laughs> that he's been going back and forth between us, he's known. So four months after we lost August, he impregnated this woman. Four months. He said, I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. It's a boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. I can't tell you what's best for you, but I can see that I've hurt you too much for us to repair this relationship. I wanted to. I wanted everything to work out. 
but you need someone who won't remind you of this, and I can't let another child go from my life. I'm sorry, but I love her as well. I love both you and her, and I can't live like this anymore. I don't know what to say other than ever since I found out she was pregnant, I felt drawn to the child. I've been afraid I would not be able to resist going to him, and in the end, it turned out that I can't forsake him. No, he's made his decision. Which, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't be with him now. How could I? How could I? Even me, even somebody as sick and, and with no self-worth as me, I couldn't even. Because that should have been my baby. <laughs> he took everything from me. And what's really messed up is, like, I, st I still love him. I still love him, even though he did this to me. I have nothing and no one. And he's just gonna go over there and live his happy little life with his fucking white picket fence and his son. I don't think he's cut out to be a parent, and I hope he's miserable. He probably was cheating with other women, too. That would not surprise me at all. Nothing could surprise me at this point. But, you know, he did when he started being with her, I was still pretty overweight. So I don't think he did it because I lost weight. But I do feel like he is more attracted to bigger girls. That's what I, that's what I think. I love him still. I'm still in love with him, even though he did this to me. What kind of sick shit is that? You can't just turn it off, you know? The worst is, I mean, I know, it can't get any worse. It's the absolute worst is, the worst is over. You're absolutely right. Like, it, I mean, all, it can only go up from here, right?